it's Thursday, the 20th of July, 2017. A warm welcome along to today's exciting United Kingdom talk, boys and girls. Hello. Now, can you see this? What do you like? Do you like this? This is something I fished out from a cupboard. I'm trying to have a little bit of a clean up at the moment. Do we like this? Look. It's New York. New York, New York. Da, 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 da. And I was going to. Actually, now I've seen it on there. I don't think I will. I was <laughs> Now, is that annoying? Is that going to annoy you like this? It does different light things. Look, different light things. Look. Different things. Off. You can't really see anything there, but like, there's that. And there's that. I think it cost me about $10, you know, from one of those street sellers in New York. Do, you, do we like this? I think that one. Now, do I need this on the wall, or is that likely to annoy people all the time? I think... You know, I was going to give that away today. I'm not so sure now. What do you reckon? Should I put it on the wall somewhere? What do you think? I need your assistance in the changing, the, the continual changing of the set here at the United Kingdom Talk Television Complex. Yes. Let's say hello to some early adopters this morning. Good morning to Gary Davidson, who is in the house this morning. Morning, Gary. Uh, Gavin Matthews is there. Good morning, Slim. Oh, no. I'm still getting over the terrible news on Tuesday night. And Slim as well. This week, I have put on a pound and a half. Terrible. <clears throat> Don't know how. No, no chocolate, no cheating, nothing. Don't know how it went on. But that does happen sometimes. You get a little blip, but the general trend is downward. So that's that's all that matters. Uh, oh. <laughs> there are. There's a pound gone already. <laughs> Terrible. Thirteen pounds down so far. Good morning to Rod Brown. Uh, Jason Darcy loves the music. Yeah, I love the music as well. That music was written by the great um, David Arnold, who I sent him a little letter, asked him if I could use his music or how much would it be, and he allowed me to use it for nothing. I have the the written details. Isn't that nice? A great man like David Arnold. Yes, exactly. Fantastic. Um, John Springate. Good morning, John. Holla. Holla. Now, it says on my little uh, Facebook messages thing that it has been automatically translated from Spanish into hello. I didn't ask it to do that. I'm quite happy with the Spanish uh, versions of, of the English words. You know, as close as they can get to them. Good morning, John. Uh, morning um, to... Uh, who else is there? Oh, I love New York. It's great, isn't it? Do you like this? It wasn't very dear. It's a bit dusty, actually. Hang on a minute. <coughs> that's probably why I was sneezing it. Oh, that's better. Does that look nice? Or is it going to be annoying? See, if I put that up there, people will think this is coming from New York, won't they? They won't, you know, it's, I mean, people are so thick, it's unbelievable. They see an Englishman here with an English accent, but then they see the New York, oh, maybe he's in New York. <laughs> Won't they? I mean, ooh, why has he got that there? People are like that. They like nitpick all the time. Have you noticed that, John? Especially with your show. John Springate is a very famous person. He was in the Glitter Band. And he goes out now on his own and does stuff. He's got a lovely new red sequin jacket, which I say um, I quite like that, John. I had one like that. I had one very, very similar to that, which I, I bought mine second hand. And I used to do bingo in it. Not in big clubs, in pubs and places like that. I was a great laugh doing bingo. Thank you, those of you that are sharing the programme on the, your walls this morning. Gary and uh, Gustav have done that. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. You see, I know what's going on all the time. Little screens everywhere flashing up. Tell me exactly what you're doing at home, dear. You know, they are. Yes. Do you notice that people nitpick all the time, don't they? And they might come up to... I bet they do still come up to you now, John. Well, your show was really good tonight. But can I suggest... No, you can't suggest. It's my show. Go away. <clears throat> they do that at my karaoke's. It's not bad tonight, Chris. But can you... No, I can't. It's my show. You want to do a show yourself? Go and do one, dear. Same with the DJing. Oh, don't you love those people? When you're DJing, I, I gave up DJing about five weeks ago now, but they would come up, oh, oh, hello, mate. If you put this song on, I guarantee you everyone will dance. You put it on, no one dances. Huh, what do you know, mate? Nothing, exactly, is the words, yes. John Springgate loves New York. I don't like New York, funnily enough. Too many people, too noisy, 
to 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 and quite dirty as well. New York, isn't it? Right in the middle. I mean, it's probably difficult to keep cleaning up after ghastly people dropping the rubbish all over the place. Anyway, you know, <laughs> I had to, I had to force my well through through for a whole pile of cut toenails at one point in New York. It was awful. Just outside Macy's, round the corner. Gustav says, darling, good morning. Loving the New York, light, light, New York light display. It would make an ideal prize for karaoke after you've managed to palm off the spider plants. Yes, good news, boys and girls. We've got rid of the spider plants. Now, unfortunately, I think Mark Cording, I don't know if he's, I don't think he's with us this morning, uh, but Mark wanted a spider plant. I, I, I don't, I'm not sure if I've got any left at all now. I managed to get rid of them on Monday. I disguised them as prizes. Oh, that was great. Yeah, have a spider plant. And pe oh, thanks very much. Now, pe but people didn't want them when I offered them. Anyone want a spider plant? Please get in touch. Not a single message. No one wanted a spider plant. So there's a lesson to be learnt there, you see. Give them out as prizes. Oh, wow, I've won a prize. Oh, a spider plant. They, they, <laughs> they were so happy. <laughs> so there's a lesson there. If you've got something to get rid of, you've got to give it away as a prize. You know, I mean, it's a shame, really. A little while ago, uh, I gave away, a, 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 I dumped an old wee stains mattress. You know, I could have given that away as a prize. I, actually, you know, if there are celebrities, and we all have these little accidents now and again, don't we, boys and girls? If you have celebrities or stars, perhaps Tina, I wonder how much that would fetch. Tina Turner's wee stained mattress on eBay. I bet you'd get thousands for that. How would you know it was hers, though? It could have been anyone's wee. Couldn't it? Oh, it's... That's Tina Turner's. <laughs> or, or the Queen. Oh, you get a lot of money for that. The Elizabeth II's wee-stained mattress on eBay. How much would you get for that? How much would you be willing to pay for that? That's the question. The Queen's wee-stained mattress. Yes. Do you think Jeremy? Cor I bet Jeremy Corbyn gets a few mattress gets through a few mattresses in a year, don't you? How about that leaks away out of there, dear? Oh, how awful! Uh, good morning to Diane. Morning, Diane. Nice to see you. And um, Scott Olgovie's there. Morning, Scott. That's that's some beard that you've grown there, Scott. That is some beard. Congratulations to you. Scott's in uh, Wanaka, New Zealand. There's a place I haven't been yet, New Zealand. Very clean there. Very clean. I don't think they've got any nuclear energy there, if I'm right there. Insane. Uh, Shania's going to catch up with us later. Thank you, Shania. I do hope you do. And remember to watch the whole show, Shania, because there will be questions on you. I'm going to set new exams. Exams to make sure people are listening to the whole show and not bits and pieces of it. I will not be on in the background. I need full attention at all times. Thank you. Uh, good morning to Karen, who says, we got advice from someone at 7.45am on how to write a book. Oh, you do, don't you? You, you just love it, don't you? Oh, oh, you know, that, that's, that's not bad tonight. But if you do this... Oh, go away. Go away. We're not interested. <clears throat> it's like the amateur people. Am and it's only amateurs, boys and girls. Amateurs, the real stars, if you're operating the sound for someone, the stars leave you to get on with it. I've worked with a few lovely, lovely people, including uh, John Springate. Um, bigger stars who you will know, the Nolans, uh, Bucks Fears. Well, these are the people that I've worked the sound for. The Nolans, Bucks Fears, uh, Beverly Sisters. Uh, might be a little bit old for you to remember those. And uh, various others, Julian Clary. Um, that's quite a lot, actually. I can't, there's none in me head at the moment now. Of course, now that I want to tell you, Sunita, da, da, Sonia. I've worked with all those people. Not one of them complained about the sound. Not one. In fact, while the Nolans was on, one of their microphones packed up. <laughs> she, she came over to me. She, she said, bless her heart. I can't remember which one it was now. She said, oh, I can't get anything out of this. I said, well, oh, sorry. I'm ever so sorry. She said, oh, don't worry. I'm mime. <laughs> No problem. But it's the amateurs that come on, dear. Can you do this for the sounds? All that, all that light's a bit bright there. Or can I have a bit more echo on the microphone? On and on and on, moaning and moaning. And then they finish the song. Oh, well, the music wasn't very loud. <laughs> moan. It's the amateurs that moan, dear. Not the professionals, ever. The professionals never moan. 
I'm still trying to get Barry Manilow into the studio. He won't moan. He'll just come and do his little bit of chat and he'll sing and that's it. And he won't moan. They don't moan, dear. Uh, John Springate uh, so, says uh, they know irony. Oh, they certainly do know irony. Irony. I, I don't know if I'm, I'm going to visit uh, New Zealand, Scott. The only reason is I'm, I'm fed up with the flying. I've been fed up for a few years now about the flying. I haven't been anywhere for <clears throat> a couple of years now just because I hate flying. I'm not scared of it. I hate it. I hate the mucking about at airports, having to worry about your suitcases, dragging that thing around everywhere. Worrying that I've lost my tickets, worrying I'm going to have my passport nicked or my money. I, I can't stand it. And you want to see the state I get into a couple of days before I'm due to get on a plane. I'm in a terrible state. That's bad enough going. Coming back, I'm even worse. <clears throat> this is no joke, Scott. On the last day of a holiday, I won't move from the hotel in case something happens and I can't get back to the plane. That is not a joke. Honestly, I won't move from the hotel. So I might have a flight at four in the afternoon. That's okay. I'll get up late. I'll hang around the hotel for as long as possible in the room. And I'll go downstairs to the lobby and start reading a book or watching a telly. S and sit there and worry that the car's going to break down. That's going to take me to the airport. That's how I am. What's the point in going anywhere when you're like that? Now, I get in my car and I drive somewhere in the UK and I hire a caravan. I don't even have, even have to eat out. Wonderful, dear. None of that food that they cook in restaurants. How do you know what's in it? Don't know, do you? No, I take my own food wherever I go. This is true. I'm not making this up, Scott. I'm honestly not making this up. <clears throat> uh, I don't know who Trailer Trash is. I don't know who that is, Jason. Is that a cabaret artist? <laughs> she does. Does she smell a wee? I wouldn't know. You said it, not me, dear. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Morning to Kim Witch, she's up in Lincolnshire. Gustav says, since you've had a bag put in, no more stains on the mattress. See, there is upside to being your age. <laughs> oh dear, I don't know if I'd like one of those bags. Justin's there. Good morning, Justin. Justin was on the Orient Express yesterday, having a little bit of a, uh, a day out on there, weren't you? I bet that was nice, wasn't it? Christ, I bet you ate a lot on there. Is there any more room? I saw a picture of you, Justin, the other day. Looks like there's three of you in those clothes now. Why don't you come to Slimmer's World with me, dear? Slimmer's World. Down, down, down. We need to be thin. Thin. <clears throat> Scott says, you'd hate the situation I'm facing at the moment. How can I call you and tell you my story? Your viewers would love it. Well, there is a phone line open. Or have you got Skype? If you've got Skype, the Skype is United Kingdom Talk. It's free. Or... You can call in on our local London number. From from New Zealand, you'd be dialing double O, double four. Um. Two O, eight one double four three four double seven. I think. Try that one if you if you want to use the phone, but that might cost you a bit, mightn't it? From New Zealand, have you got Skype? United Kingdom talk is Skype. Or the phone from New Zealand would be 0044 uh, 20 I reckon that's the number uh, if you're dialing from New Zealand. I'm quite good with the phone. I used to work for British, uh, British Telecom. I was an engineer. Oh, I love that job. Going around in my little van. Hello. Hello, engineers. <laughs> Going and fixing their little phones. Taping bits of wire together while pretending to have done it properly. <laughs> Morning to John Aiken, who says, I can't wait for my holiday tomorrow. Two weeks in Bali. Oh, that's a long old flight, isn't it? Is that near Australia? I think it's near Australia. I love the whole airport thing. I get really excited. Oh, I don't. I don't. I hate it. I hate it. Absolutely hate it. And when you, if you're flying, I don't know how you're flying. Are you doing a business class? Have you saved up for that? Or, or are you going on the, um, on the normal seats? With a business class, you don't have to be there for about an hour before the flight. But I still hate it. Just hanging around or just waiting for things to happen all the time. I hate that. Having to wait for people, don't you? You're hanging around there, hanging around there all the time. Oh, it gets on my nerves. Well, Scott, if you were trying to call, that hasn't come through. So that might be the wrong number I've given you. So I'm not quite sure what you have to dial. But lines 
are open now, boys and girls. Anyone else who wants to call in 020 3477 Good morning to Jimmy D, who's with us this morning. He was a trade DJ. A trade... I never quite made it to trade. They weren't interested in Kylie Minogue and things like that, unfortunately. Shame, really. Um, well, we've got a new LED light outside in the street. I was coming home last night uh, from the quiz night. Good, not bad quiz night. Line. Still a bit quiet, the quiz at the moment. I have to say, uh, I think we started with six teams. We ended up with five. That often happens. You know, you get a team drop out. Maybe it gets too late for them. Or they've, or they've been really bad at the quiz, so they decide to quit. Um, and um, so five teams last night. Uh, but uh, a nice atmosphere in there. Uh, oh, last week, I meant to tell you, the second prize at the moment is six bottles of beer. It was a bottle of wine, but at the moment it's six bottles of beer, and that's a prize. Well, the other week, so so the top prize for the quiz night I do on Wednesday, it's a £30 bar tab. That's not bad, is it? £30 bar tab, and, and it was a brand new team that won last night who hadn't played before. So i done the quiz, the prizes came, out went the £30 bar tab, out went the uh, six bottles of beer. Now, the six bottles of beer have been like that for th about three weeks. So that is the prize. Well, a couple of weeks ago, two of these, um, two two blokes, in, two, two gay boys in there, they won the six bottles of beer. He called the manager over and says, oh, hello, we've won the six bottles of beer. Can we swap that, please, for a bottle of wine? <clears throat> and the manager says, well, no, that's the prize. Oh, well, we were going to come next week and bring lots of people with us. So do you think you could swap that over for us? And then there's like, well, no, that's the prize. Well, that's not very good customer services, is it? Now, th this is all told to people at the beginning of the night. You know, these are the prizes. £30 bar tab, six bottles of beer, one bottle of beer for the people at the bottom, the, the very last one. And they were arguing, uh, uh, ending up with them, get, getting up and saying, well, we're going to leave now. Bye bye. It's just odd, isn't it? The prize is... It's like, you know, going to the airport, I suppose. I'm just trying to think of an, 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 an allergy here. Or going, going to John Lewis. Right, you get there and you want to buy a television. OK, so we got the television. Thank you very much. Going out the door. No, actually... Sorry, can we change this for, for a fridge? We've just bought that. Nothing wrong with it. Why would you do that? I don't understand. But when you're giving away a prize, you don't win the National Lottery. £10 million. Pounds. Oh, can we change that for a three-bedroomed house, please? No. That's the prize. Aren't people strange? Very, very strange people. Very, very strange people indeed. I don't know. Um, John says it's four hours from Australia. We have been upgraded to Premier Class. Or well, at least you'll have a little bit more leg room there, won't you? On the old premier class. Huh? That'd be better for you. Better for you. Um, so, as I say, I came down my little road yesterday. And as I got to the bottom, just as I get to the bottom of the road, I turn left and then left again. And there's my garage. And there's this, like, white light. I thought, oh, that's obvious. there's a car coming the other way. So you can't see the car that's about to come around the corner. But you can see the lights, you see. So I'm sitting there. And this white light says, it's not moving, this white light. And I thought, okay, maybe it's dropping someone off. I just wait a few seconds. I'm waiting and waiting. Still nothing. Waiting and waiting and waiting. And still nothing. So I, I, I slowly edged forward <clears throat> in electric mode, of course. Uh, and, and I'm coming, and I'm, these lights are getting brighter now. On, the, the lights are on the road, yeah, like a, like a beam. I'm still not seeing a car. Where's this bloody car? It must be parked up or something then. So I've come round and got, got round. And the light is still there, but no car. And then I realised they've changed the street lamp, the yellow sodium street lamp, to one of those white LED things. And instead of looking like a street lamp, it now looks like a headlight beam on the floor. And also, it doesn't seem to be as bright as the street lamp was. So that's great, isn't it? Dear me, LED lamps. I think they're going to do them all at some point. And then there's a lot of places in West London who have had these LED lamps and people complaining that they're too bright and shining through their window. It, it, I have to say, it's a very, very different light. It really is. It looks like there's someone trying to come around the corner. 
Isn't that strange and mysterious, boys and girls? Yes, it certainly is. Um, what else? Have we, oh, we got an email to read out this morning. An email has flooded in to the United Kingdom Talk uh, Television Studios this week, boys and girls. You can always send an email in. It's chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And if you're wondering, incidentally, after the BBC has revealed pay, uh, you know, uh, I can't lie to you, boys and girls. I looked at these BBC pay packets and I thought to myself, is that it? You know... As 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 host of this program, I have to tell you, uh, you know, in 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 all fairness, uh, that I earn much more than all of the BBC staff put together. I really do. I looked at these BBC wages and I thought, Puh, chicken feed, dear, <coughs> dear me, chicken feed, yes. It's a good job I'm not a woman, no, I'd only be getting half as much, wouldn't I? They're all going mad, aren't they? Have you seen it in the papers this morning? Look at this. Um, uh, there's a, a woman's own presenter, Jane Garvey. Now, you see, I, did, I don't know why they've revealed how much people are getting, because this will create disquiet among each other. Yeah, and it's a bit like, oh, well, why is she getting that while I'm getting this? And why is he getting that while I'm getting this? That's not fair. And that's what's happened now. There's going to be uproar over this, I'm telling you now. I don't understand why people want to know how much who earns all the time. What's all that about? Nosy. It's just nosiness. Why do you want to know how much someone gets? How's that going to affect your lonely, pathetic life? It's not, is it? Well, they're going mad, absolutely mad in the papers. Now, this woman, uh, woman's our presenter, woman's our on Radio 4. Now, who listens to that? How many, pe how many listeners has she got, for Christ's sake? Woman's hour. Come on. BBC radio presenter Jane Garvey has laid into the BBC over gender pay gap. Because this is the big thing at the moment, gender. As I mentioned to you on the show yesterday, we've now moved away from the whole paedophilia thing, you know, and gay sex orgies all over the place. We've moved away from all that now. We're now on gender. Okay, what it'll be next week, I don't know. But at the moment, everyone is obsessed with gender and transgender and all that business. So it's gender at the moment. The Woman's Hour spoke out amidst claims of mutiny inside Broadcasting House after female stars discovered how their salaries lagged behind their male colleagues. The corporation faces another huge increase in its salary bill after its talent list revealed the huge gender pay divide, paving the way to raft of claims from women presenters. <clears throat> So that's just the the, the whole, uh, of course, the girls, of course they're not. You know, of course they're very unhappy about this. It's turned out that, that a lot of them are not getting as much as the men. And um, even Joan Collins has waded in. The great Joan Collins from Dynasty, boys and girls. Yeah, we love Dynasty. Oh, don't you love that music? That's coming back soon. I think it's going to be only on Netflix, though. Although there's not any of the original characters in it, as far as I can see. Anyway, as Electus Carrington, actress Joan Collins was one of the biggest stars of Dynasty. This is in this morning's Super Sore Away Daily Mirror. But on the back of the BBC salary scandal, which revealed huge gender pay gap in an explosive report unveiled yesterday, she revealed her male co-star was contractually obliged to be paid more than her. Oh dear, she says, only a couple of actresses on the BBC Rich List, she tweeted after the report revealed that only a third of its top 96 earners are women and the top seven are all men. Uh, reminds me when John Forsyth contractually had to receive much more than me on Dynasty, she continued. Jones, 84, earned around £52,000 per episode. That's not a bad pay packet, is it? Uh, on the iconic 1980s show, John Forsyth uh, reportedly received £65,000, equating to a difference of almost half a million pounds per series. 
In the last year, Dynasty producers finally gave in a salary parity with John Forsyth, although his contract stipulated that he had to get a few thousand a week more than the next highest paid actor. What's all that about then? I did just money, 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 all the blooming time. Remember, I, I think a lot of this is to do with the... Um, uh, what's that called now? The... The agents, because they have to get their cut as well. So it's in the agent's interest to get as much money as possible for the star. Joan says, when I reported for work, I was told, sorry, Joan, we can't afford to pay you every week. So you're only going to be in half the episodes. <laughs> I mean, a lot of them, I, I don't know. I saw this list. Yesterday. I mean, three and a, was it three and a half million pounds for... Um, uh, oh, what's his name? Old uh, Chris Evans. Three and a half, was it two and a half? Three and a half million pound for that? God, oh, blimey. I don't think he's worth that much. I really don't. Do you? Three and a half million pounds to watch Chris Evans. He ain't ever, he don't even bother having a shave half the time, does he? Oh, but rest assured, boys and girls, Chris Reardon here on United Kingdom Talk is paid far more Far, far more than Chris Evans for hosting your daily little chat. He's not even on every day, is he? Oh, oh no, he does the Radio 2 thing, doesn't he? 88 to 91 FM. This is Radio 2 from the BBC. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know what you think about the old uh, BBC wage thing. It's just it's neither in or there to me. I don't know how much the newscasters get. I mean, how much do you pay someone for, for sitting there at a desk and reading out an auto queue? They don't have to make anything up or anything like that. Someone else presumably writes the writes the script that the news readers read out, don't they? Doesn't someone else write that? I would have thought. They just sit there. Good morning. The 10 o'clock news from the BBC with Hugh Edwards. I can't do a Welsh accent, I'm afraid. But they don't do anything, do they? You know, I sit here. There's, no, there's nothing written. There's no script here. I just chat rubbish for an hour. I find it quite easy chatting rubbish for an hour, as you probably realised. Anyway, the email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk if you ever want to send in an email. Uh, as indeed Chris has done. Hello to Chris, uh, who is in the United States of America, and says, Hello, Mr. Reardon. I'm still enjoying your shows and was actually able to catch one being filmed live. We are live at the moment. If it is, look at the... Okay, see, that's saying, oh, I haven't... That, that went out of focus then. Just a moment. I've got to do something to stop that. One moment, please. That was some, um, oh, I, jump, I, I, uh, off. 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 There we are. Sorry, that, that went out of focus. Then. As you can see, the clock there is telling you it's coming up to 5 to 11 on Thursday the 20th of July 2017. If that's the time, if you're in the UK here now or wherever you are in the world... Adjust or take away or add hours to wherever you are at the time, then let me know. Uh, then you are watching us live, rather. If it's another time, then you're watching me recording. Okay, that's how you know. Um, you know, you should charge more for live access. <laughs> well, you want me to charge for people to watch this now. Do you, in your wildest dreams, Chris, think someone would actually subscribe if they had to pay for this program? I don't think so, darling. I don't think so. It's bad enough. Netflix trying to get money out of people, isn't it? Yes. Putting in all the little access codes and all that. People don't want to pay for anything, dear. They buy these little sticks. Is it code Kojak or something? Little Kojak sticks. They plug into their computers or um, I don't know if they can plug them into their televisions or not. And they watch all this stuff for nothing, dear. They're all going to get done, I'm telling you now. At some point, they will come along and nick these Kojak sticks and then you won't be able to watch the telly anymore. No. Chris says, can I just ask two questions or suggestions? <clears throat> For future shows, I'm going to type like you said yes. Otherwise, if you said no, you probably stopped reading. So then, in that case, the deranged fan who sits for your trash every week will be one reading this part of the letter. Hello, Gustav. <laughs> <laughs> I'm American and we drink coffee. But the other day, I was making a cup of tea and I thought, I wonder what the proper way of making a cup of tea is. Any chance you could do a how-to or DIY video on proper tea making, I would be more than happy to do that. It's very, very easy. I have actually 
uh, told on this program over the last 12 years, several times, how to make a proper cup of tea. Now, don't think you can come to the UK and automatically get a, a proper cup of tea. There's a couple of places that haven't got a blooming clue. I will do that, though, as a video. I will do that. Just one thing I've got to tell you, um, Chris, very, very important that it is not a tea bag and a cup of hot water. That is incorrect. The tea bag goes in the cup, you put your kettle on, you boil the water. And then the moment it's switched off, you pour the boiling water onto the tea. Do not allow the water to become very hot. It must be boiling when you put that water on the tea bag. Very important. Uh, the, the worst offender around here is Frankie and Benny's. They bring you, um, no word of a lie, they bring you over a cup of hot water and a tea bag on the side. I mean, do me a favour. And it tastes vile. You absolutely know, and there, there's a lot of machines now, there's a lot of machines in places now who say uh, it's going to make you a cup of tea and it just gives you hot water and it tastes rank. It really does. You've got to have boiling water on that. I'll, I will do it as a little video, though, OK? Um, Chris also says, I've been noticing that on a few of your thumbnail pictures on your YouTube videos are somewhat concerning. Uh, well, those thumbnails, I don't make those myself. What happens is once you upload the show, you are given several different thumbnails to choose from, and you choose one of them, OK? Uh, they're not always the best ones either. Uh, the other day, I was going to click on one of your videos and I was worried. Your thumbnail image looked as if you were in a bad mood or that you were giving some horrible news during your show. Oh, I can do bad. I can do bad mood faces. I can do sad faces. <laughs> it just depends what I'm talking about at the time, you see. And when it makes that thumbnail, it, it hasn't decided what you're doing, you see. It just takes it randomly. Um, then a few days later, another one of this upsetting thumbnail images appeared on your video. Are you secretly telling us something? Are you being held prisoner and forced to film and host this United Kingdom talk show? If this is the case, in your next video, don't blink and we'll send the police over right away. No one should have to be forced to put on that show. help. If you look at the images below, uh, you can't see them, unfortunately, uh, you will be able to see a very interesting thing. I call it a pissy mood jacket. <laughs> if you look at that thumbnail image of the past few image videos, you will see that the images that you look mad, depressed or just sad. It's when you were wearing that certain jacket. Coincidence? I don't think so. OK, let's try and get this picture down. To sh oh, it's a zip file. Oh, I hate zip files. I can't work them, dear. Is there several pictures in there? I should have done this earlier, shouldn't I? Hang on, let's see what happens. Let's try and put it on the desktop. I really don't cope well with zip files. Oh, I can never get the damn things now. What one you see there now? It's all over the place now. Is it that one? Hello from America. There it is. Let's put that over there. Try and undo that. What happens when I double click that? Oh, image one. Okay. Uh, all right, just a minute now. I'll try and show this to you. I've got to move it from one computer to the next, you see. I should have done this earlier, shouldn't I? Never mind. We've done it now. Um, desktop videos for live shows. Let's put that there. OK, now let me see if I can show it to you, boys and girls. One moment, please. We are trying to connect you. <coughs> Add image to browse. What did, what did I call it? Image one? Was it image one? Let's have a look what he sent us. There it is. Videos and pictures. Image one. There it is. Like that's, that's that there. That there. And you might be able to see this now. One minute. One minute. One minute. How do I do that from there? Oh, it's that one. There we go. Oh. Well, difficult to see, really, isn't it? <laughs> But look closely there. Now, which is the jacket he doesn't like, though? Let's go back to the email and see what the email says. 
the pissy mood jacket. Oh, okay. So is, is it the last one? Is what the last one? Unfortunately, it's a little bit small. The pissy mood jacket. Which one is that? Oh, is it the is it the checked one? It's one. Of, is it one of the checked ones? No, it's not. It's the it's the slightly. Do you know? It's a little bit too far for me to see that. Um, actually, if I open the, maybe I can open the image on my own computer and zoom in a bit. Oh, yes, I can. Oh, it's that jacket. Oh, yes, I do. It's, it's true, isn't it? It's... No, you've got two jackets there. You look, 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 the, 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 three, the three... One, two... No, there's two different jackets there, isn't there? <laughs> You're quite mad, Chris, I think. <laughs> Quite mad, Chris. There, I see what you mean, though. No, there's, there's, there's no. That I don't have a a, a a separate jacket that I put on when I'm upset. That is true. That is. <laughs> Thank you very much, Chris. A T a T video will come up for you. Do not worry. A T video will come up. All right. Gustav says. Uh, so, are you taking requests from Yanks? What happened with my suggestion that you all should bring back your keep fit section? I mean, I know the last time you did your back in, but it was funny watching you lunge and thrust. And as you are packing on pounds daily, perhaps bows orders. A... Look at you. See, there's another one there. Oh, Gustav there. Gustav. You know, pointing out things that are wrong. Rick says I've frozen. No, I haven't, Rick. It's you. It must be you, because no one else has complained. You are the one that's frozen, dear. La, let it be, let it go, 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 or something like that. Good morning, Craig. You haven't been around for a while, have you? I was a little bit worried about you, dear, that you disappeared. Now, are you looking after your pets properly, boys and girls? Eh? My cat continues to walk round in circles. She's in the garden at the moment. They're doing her little circles round. After clearing up the mess again this morning, bless her. Well, how much do you spend on your dogs? Anyone got a dog? No, I'm not talking about your partners. We've all had those, haven't we? Hey, you've woken up in the morning. <laughs> and what is that next to me? <laughs> well, well, well. If your dog is fed up with roughing, roughing it, then this could just be the thing. How's that for your doggy kennel? Look, only £170,000. Look at that. Where's my glasses? One moment, please. Oh, they're downstairs. How annoying is that? OK, uh, let's... let's uh... Uh, for a mere £170,000, you could get your mo mo your dog its very own mansion. The dog manners can be fitted with treat dispensers, a conference calling system, and even a thermostat. <laughs> Each house, produced by a Cheshire-based Hecane Verona, takes about four months to build with styles including colonial villa, Roman imperial mansion, and Spanish uh, palacio. It's looking very nice. Gustav, you don't live anywhere like that, do you, my love? Gustav lives in one of those tower blocks, don't you, my darling? With with wee-smelling lifts. How ghastly they are. Dear me. Um, the houses feature dolomite and marble. Marble! Marble on the floor. Well, at least it'd be clean, easy to clean. Oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I should replace my kitchen floor with marble. It'd be so much easier to clean up after the cat then, won't it? Instead of having the newspapers all over the place, prices start. Oh, well, if you haven't got hundred and seventy thousand, that's okay. Start at thirty thousand. Can you afford that for your little dog? Well, you're, you're horrible. What you won't spend that on your pet? You tight old thing you are. Cancel the new car and buy your pet a nice pet house like this. If your pooch is after something more palatial, top of the range kennel costs just hundred and seventy thousand pounds. It's not bad, is it? Not that that far short of the average house price, which is £218,000. Our objective is to create majestic and royal-looking homes for dogs. I like that very much, don't you? I think you should order that immediately for your little pooch at home. Yes. 
Anyone want to call in this morning? We're going to close the phone line shortly. 020 3477 is my local London number. 020 3477 And uh, staying on the subject of dogs on the BBC News website this morning, it's saying being friendly is in a dog's nature and could be the key to how they share our lives, says a US scientist. Dogs evolved from wolves. Ow! Ow, 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 ow. Wolves. Uh, years and years ago, thousands and tens of thousands of years ago. During this time, certain genes that make up dogs, particularly uh, gregarious, have been selected for, according to research. This may give dogs their distinctive personalities, including a craving for human flesh, a, comp a craving for human, f for human company. Our finding of genetic variation in both dogs and wolves provides a possible insight into animal personality. Uh, some may have roles in other domestic species and maybe even cats, it says here. The researchers studied the behaviour of domestic dogs and grey wolves living in captivity. They carried out a number of tests the animal's skills at problem solving and sociability. These showed that the wolves were as good at, as dogs at solving the problems. Oh, 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 oh! Yes. Dogs were, however, much more friendly. They spent more time greeting human strangers and gazing at them. <laughs> and they do, don't they, dogs? I've got some horrible dogs around here. There's a bloke up there. He, he, he runs a security firm. He's got these really nasty-looking Alsatians, and they always growl and bark. And I don't think, you know, he's walking them outside. On, they, I think they've, I've never seen them off a lead, really, to be honest. But um, I, I, I want to see dogs like that with muzzles on, don't you? They, I don't like great big dogs and scary dogs. Although my sister, my sister's got a Rottweiler and it is the softest old thing you'd ever seen in your life. It's heads like this and it jumps and nearly flattens you when it lays on you for a cuddle. And it puts its paws around you for a cuddle. <laughs> DNA uh, tests found a link between certain genetic changes and behaviours such as attentiveness to strangers or picking up on social cues. Similar changes in humans are associated with a rare genetic syndrome where people are highly sociable. Well, <laughs> not always, are they? God, some people are as miserable as sin most of the time. Oh, we got a phone call coming in here. Let's see. Oh, now where's that? 6-4. I don't know where you are. Hello, who's on the line, please? Yeah, Chris, it's Scotty Ogilvy. Mate. Oh, Scott, you? you've got through. Good morning, Scott. Yeah, I got through, mate. I had to get a bit of power in my phone. It was running out of battery. Well, it's lovely to hear you. Now, I've got to tell you, uh, Scott works with me. We worked together at uh, Belushi's in London Bridge, which was one of the most wonderful places to work, wasn't it, Scott? It absolutely was. I don't know what they were ever thinking letting you go from there, mate. You really held the place together. <laughs> oh, I had such a laugh there. It was a change of management and basically he didn't want karaoke. Um, so that was oh, it. Oh, look, it was one of those things. It was one of those things that place went through. Uh, well, Jesus, I was only there for two years. Yeah. And uh, I was over there on my overseas working experience from New Zealand. And, um, yeah, um, I think during the time there, I think we had three or four managers in two years. And, yeah, it was one of those places that just couldn't seem to hold staff down. But, uh, unfortunately, that's the way things go. It was a bloody great venue. And, and, and I think from what I can see now, they're doing some pretty good things in there. You want to give them a call, Chris, man. You, uh, know, well, you want to get there and uh, put, well, put Scott, your finger in that hole. Uh, a new someone, the, the that manager only lasted about a year. Whether he left or moved on, don't know. It doesn't matter anyway. Um, and there were no scout sour grapes. He just wanted to do something different, which didn't work. Uh, about a year later, someone no. took over and they rang me. They rang me. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. I yeah. already had. <clears throat> I already had another job on Mondays, so I You're couldn't a take it. Man. You're a popular man. So I couldn't take it. But um, I would love to have gone back there. Maybe it's in the future. I don't know. I think these things have a time limit as well, you know. And, uh, of course, if you this go back true. somewhere, and, Scott. And, and of, course, of course, the people in the area change as of well. Course. The demographic <clears throat> changes. And, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You wouldn't have the same thing because all those people have moved on. Now and again, I bump into the two, the, uh, Carla and Cara. Um, she, she, she's doing well at the moment. She's, she's doing well, yeah. She's, uh, she's looking fantastic. Who's the Aussie bloke with the frizzy hair and the beard and moustache? He's a nice bloke. I often bump into him as oh, well. Oh, God. Can't, can't remember <laughs> his name. Can't remember his name. Anyway, what's your story, Scott? Anyway. 
<clears throat> oh yeah, you, so so you were saying about the weather and and all these kinds of things like that. So obviously it's summer over there in the UK. I'm, I'm uh, for those that are listening. I'm I'm calling from uh, uh, the town of Wanaka in New Zealand. Beautiful little place in the South Island. Right. Uh, was situated beside Lake Wanaka um, for the last. Uh, 13 days. Um, I've been driving a tour. So, so what I do for a job is I'm I'm a tour bus driver. Oh, wow, and, okay. Uh, and also a, and and also a tour guide. Yeah, you got the uh, personality when, when I, when for when that. Yeah, when I was working with Chris, I was just working behind the bar, you know, doing my overseas experience, having a bit of fun. But what I do for a profession is, is, is I'm a driver guide. So I take people on a bus and I show them around. And, and for the last few years, I've had a contract with a group from the Melbourne University. Uh, I take their snowboarding team away for two weeks. Uh, I spend a week in Queenstown and a week in Wanaka, uh, which are the, the two main ski hubs in the South Island of New Zealand. Uh, we get a lot of tourism coming over from Australia, and, and, and these groups are, are, are sort of part of that. So I take a group of 45 people up um, four local ski fields, which are um, absolutely beautiful, absolutely beautiful scenery. It's a real treat to be paid to go up there and just um, yeah. you know snowboard. I get to snowboard for free and ski for free or whatever. Wow. Um, and, and, and yeah, so I'm in the middle of that, but I've got to take them back, uh, to Christchurch tomorrow, which is where I live. Um, and they have to, uh, go on a plane back to, to, to Melbourne tomorrow night at nine o'clock. Um, but we have some really bad weather coming, uh, to New Zealand that's supposed to come, uh, during tonight. We're supposed to get a meter of snow, uh, on, on the path that I need to drive the bus over tomorrow. So I'm a little bit on edge on, oh, wow. uh, as yeah. to whether I'm even going to be able to go home and see my girlfriend. Um, so yeah, yeah. Do you, do that, you have, that, that, that's my little story. Do you snow chains there? Uh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, certainly, going up the ski field, we use snow chains. Um, I, I'm, I'm driving a 45 seater coach, it's a Volvo coach, right? Um, and and it, it's quite a late model one. It's only a year and a half old, so it's, it's a great, great coach for the for the road. Uh, but yeah, we, we we certainly have to put chains uh, on the back sometimes, uh, and then also uh, there have been times in the last couple of weeks where I've had to put them on the front as well, which is. Uh, always, always interesting driving. There's uh, yeah. been some certainly butt puckering experiences coming down some very steep roads uh, in in muddy conditions and icy conditions where the bus has actually gone into a bit of a slide. And Gosh. I've uh, fortunately uh, yes. I've, I've, uh, I've been I've... doing it for a long time now, so I've I've, I've learned the skills to uh, to keep it on the road. So, uh, but yeah, it certainly doesn't make it any easier when you're going down the hill <laughs> and someone's coming I was, towards um... you and. And, and 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 you put your foot on the uh, the brake and you turn the steering wheel and you keep going in the direction that you're not supposed to be going. So, <laughs> and that's that's what you have to do, is but it? Yeah, I encourage I encourage, I encourage all your listeners to uh, to uh, oh, get my. on good and get onto Google and and triple uh, and Google triple cone uh, ski field and Wanaka Google Cardrona C A R T A D R O N A Cardrona Ski Field, uh, the Remarkables and uh, Coronet Peak, beautiful places, and uh, and I'm sure uh, if your listeners have the time to, to 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 have a wee look, they'll see some beautiful images of uh, of, of what I get to look at for a uh, for a job. That's not a bad gig, is it? That's not a bad gig at all. I remember gig. being. Um, I did some DJing. Uh, I'm going back uh, probably ten years, maybe a little bit more now. And uh, every year I used to go and do um, uh, some DJing in either France or Italy, uh, some of the club club med, they were oh, called. Oh, beautiful. And yeah. um, uh, the very first time we were going to somewhere called Flain, which is in the French Alps somewhere, I think, somewhere up there. And this coach was, and, and, and it had just snowed. And this coach was going up, you know, they go around the mountain, you know, up, down, up, like, up, like. And it was going around this corner and then it, it, it stopped and it started sliding backwards. Oh, my God. And we, <laughs> I closed my eyes. And then, of course, it started moving off again. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, we, exactly, we thought I had exactly the same thing happen to me two days ago. Oh, my God. It had been an icy night. We, we had chains on the back wheels, and we just about we were nearly at the top, right nearly at the at the drop off zone. And there was a split 
switchback, you know, one of those really tight switchbacks. It's, it's yeah. a 10 kilometers an hour, sort of a corner. You've yeah. got to go right out on the other side of the road in a bus. And I went right out on the other side. I was in the perfect place to get around this corner. And I went to do my final turn on the steering wheel where you had to get, you know, quite tight round to the left. And I turned the wheels and the bus just kept going forward. And oh. I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, and you can't tell your passengers that you're doing that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just sort of fear that, you know, your instincts kick in in a situation like that. And you just go, oh, shit. And you turn the steering wheel back and you feather on the on the accelerator and eventually your back wheels kick in and then your steering wheels kick in and then you get around the corner and you go, oh. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> it's, do you have a barrier on the side of the road or is it just a sheer drop? That's exactly it. That's exactly it. And, I, and I'm not talking, I'm not talking, you know, like a jungle gym sort of uh, uh, a height. I'm talking about 1,200 metres. That's about 38, 3,900 feet that we're up off, off sea level. And if I was to go over the edge on, like, say, Treble Cone, if I was coming down Treble Cone, if I went over the edge, I've got a long, long way to go. Cardrona yeah. is actually the highest, uh, it's the highest road in the Southern Hemisphere. Right. It's, uh, up in the car park there, I think we're about 2,058 metres, uh, which would be uh, not too far off 64, 6,500 feet. Um, so yeah, if, if you fall off the road from down there in a, in a, in a 15 ton bus, you're going a long way. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's one of those things. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's underworked and underpaid. <laughs> do they, do they lose any coaches? I bet they don't. I bet they've never lost a coach. No, down there. No, no, no. We're no. all, we're, we're, we're all trained to put it into the water table. If, uh, if, if you, you, you get trained to be able to assess the road from a, from a distance and, and uh, if, if you can see an issue coming, you, you line yourself up correctly. And right. uh, the, the only time any coaches go into the water table is usually when there's a car driving up the hill when everyone should be driving down or, or uh, very extreme uh, circumstances if there was a blizzard and it was a bit of a whiteout, which does happen. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and coaches do go into the ditch. But, yeah, it, it, I, I can't recall any time in, uh, in, in my living memory that any coach in a, on a ski field in no. New Zealand has, uh, but that really, has really is a piece. that really is a skilled job, isn't it? Driving a coach in that sort of conditions, isn't it? Oh, and it's not oh, for something absolutely. you know, absolutely. like I couldn't do it. You know, and, and, and anyone who's sat in the coach and, uh, and and been in a situation like you said when you went up the coach over there in the Alps, that uh, uh, when it does go into a bit of a slide, in, anyone who's been in the coach appreciates the fact that they've made it up the mountain on a day that they probably wouldn't want to have driven up there on yeah. on, on their own and. And uh, certainly when I come down the mountain at the end of the day, everybody gives you a pat on the back. And, and uh, because of the sort of groups that I take, I usually uh, uh, go down to the pub and have, have a beer or two with them in the evening, and, and, and they usually shout it as well. So, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those uh, pretty rewarding jobs as well. It's, 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 it doesn't go without thanks. Uh, it certainly goes without uh, the proper remuneration from your employer. You well, know, don't don't all jobs, but, don't all jobs, unless of course you work at the BBC. They get a lot of money there now. <laughs> oh, so I believe I follow all that on the face, eh? And uh, yeah, no, I hear that they uh, that they that they pay them pretty well if you're a man, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Only if you're a bloke, you'd get good money there. Scott, yeah, that was yeah, absolutely yeah, fascinating, yeah, yeah. mate. Well, apparently, apparently, if you've got if you're old and you've got curly hair and you're tall and you're really arrogant, or if you're uh, a ginger minger with a uh, with a pair of glasses who thinks he owns uh, uh, too many cars, then uh, you can get paid quite well. Yeah, that'd be the man, old Chris Evans. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks for calling, Scott. Uh, really I, appreciate okay, mate, that. It's probably cost me a fortune calling you from New Zealand, but anyway, I'll, uh, it's nice to talk to you. Send and, uh, send I'll in the bill. On you every now and again. Send in the bill, I'll reimburse you, OK? <laughs> oh, hey, let's start, mate. Good on you. Hey, take care, Ed. Good brother. luck, Scott. Bye-bye now. There we are, Scott calling in from New Zealand. I don't think we've had a call from New Zealand before. How fantastic was that? That's fantastic to hear Scott calling in there. It really is. But um, you can just imagine, and it, it is one of the most frightening things, just sitting on this coach, and then the thing is sliding back or going the wrong way. And... Your life, morning Mark, your life is in the hands of that coach driver. What an enormous responsibility that is, isn't it, eh? 
and I'm still alive, probably because of that coach driver who, who, who was driving up then 10 years ago and the coach started slipping back, but he got out of it. I mean, I suppose they have to do that several times, a, a, you know, a year. That will happen to the coach drivers. It's just how it is. You ever walked along pavement and there's, you slip over if you've got trainers on, don't you? Anyway, we'll wrap it up there, boys and girls. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. Uh, just going to do today's birthdays. <clears throat> All right, here comes today's birthdays. Oh, can't get them up. Where are they? There we are. And happy birthday to uh, a dear, dear neighbour of mine who lives just up the road here, funnily enough, on the same road. Angel Hart, uh, she loves her garden. She does a lot of gardening there. Happy birthday today to Angel. Uh, to Teresa Adams. Greetings, Teresa. Happy birthday to Teresa, who's got a lovely photograph of her on the um, on the Facebook there with two dolphins. Uh, Lady Sandra Anthony, who is the wife of my uh, lovely window cleaner. It's her birthday today. Happy birthday, Lady Sandra. It's not a bad name, is it? Lady Sandra. Have you got a certificate to go with the word lady there? I don't know if you have. Kathy Thacker. One of our Manalo ladies is 52 years old today. Happy birthday, Kathy. Younger than me, my darling. Happy birthday. Tracy Moynihan. Tracy Moynihan, 45 today. Happy birthday, Tracy. You're right, sweetheart. And it's Richard Clark's birthday as well today. So they're the birthdays. Not too many today, so I might even be able to get all the names in when I sing the song. <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Angel Teresa, Lady Sandra, Kathy, Tracy, Richard. Happy birthday to you. Oh, yeah. Wasn't so much as a singer's rather than a rap then, wasn't it? You need to see me rapping away then. I think I could be a rapper. Do you know I could be one of those rapper? Do I need a gold chain or something like that, perhaps? I don't know. Anyway, that's it for the show today. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I'm nowhere tonight. I have Tuesdays and Thursdays off, which I quite like. Tuesdays and Thursdays off, so I shall have a nice, relaxing night at home. And I'll see you again on the next show. Thank you very much for joining us. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye now.